Are you out shopping for a new SUV? Are you concerned about which one to get? Which one's going to last longest? Which one's going to give you the best bang for your buck? Yeah, I, it's interesting questions. Hey, it's Tim. Pickup truck plus SUV talk. I have this interesting study from iccars.com. Let's discuss some of these attributes and give you some information when you're out there shopping. Now, this is just one study among a thousand of different studies out there. So take all these studies with a grain of salt, as you should. And we're going to look at just the best bang for the buck on this study and use this with your other shopping tools and make you an informed consumer. Because that's, well, that's where you want to be. So the stories are around pickuptrucktalk.com. I'm going to go ahead and put a link in the description and in the comments. And that way you'll be able to find it when it's done on the homepage, convenient as it is right now today. So best SUVs for the money lifespan. And this is written by managing editor Jill Sminello. And she wrote this up based on a study we got from iccars.com. They're a used car and new car kind of shopping place. So looking at this, it looking at 8.3 million new vehicles sold from September 2023 through December 2023. They looked at that first. They looked at 8.3 million new vehicles sold in this four-month time period. They took that and compared it with a prior longest-lasting vehicle study. That study was 1.8 or 181 million used vehicles. They looked at the odometer readings of 181 million vehicles. That's a huge sample size. And they put them in spreadsheets and they did the thing and they sorted them. They came to an average on the vehicle's names and average for lifespan. Now, again, this is a large sample size. It doesn't meet, dictate all future results, but it is interesting information that for you to use when you're out shopping for a new vehicle. They then took this information and used to calculate the average price per 10,000 miles. So that's just a metric, interesting metric. And so looking at this, we'll go down. There's a chart. Always a chart. So we have the best small SUVs for the money. And looking at the top, we have the Honda CRV, which is known as one of the more reliable vehicles on the marketplace. Average lifespan, 219,000 miles. That's pretty impressive because the SUV average is 173,000 miles. That's almost 45,000 miles more than the average. I think I'm close. Math is not my strong suit, but I'm doing the best I can. We have the Subaru Forester. We have the Subaru Outback, the Toyota RAV4, which is interesting because when we compared these vehicles, Jill did a comparison story, which is right here in a link, that it was interesting that the CRV kind of came up on top of the RAV4. And here's more information that might put the RAV, the CRV even higher on the RAV4. Very tight competitors. Ford Escape, the Hyundai, so I say it like Sunday, Hyundai, Tucson. So looking at the pricing, we have average new vehicle price. We have the average lifespan in miles. Uh, the average new vehicle price is right around 35,000. Some outbacks 40,000 in that range, right in that, that number. Um, average lifespan, 200,000, except you get on Ford Escape and Hyundai Tucson. Not quite as long as lasting. Now, if you're thinking about lifespan, if you drive 12,000 miles a year, you're looking at, well, aha, calculator. So 200,000 divided by 12,000 miles a year looking at almost 16 years of ownership. So if you bought one of these brand new, uh, you probably will never get the average lifespan unless you keep your vehicles for a very, very long time. And it should last. Now, looking at the best midsize SUVs, which this category is just bigger than the two row SUVs to bigger three row SUVs. Looking at this list is the Mazda CX-9. It's the top of the list, which is very interesting. The Toyota 4Runner, two row, but just a little bit bigger SUV is the second, 230,000 miles on average, the Toyota 4Runner. Honda Pilot, 221. Hyundai Santa Fe, Ford Edge. Highlander Hybrid and Highlander. It's interesting how they separate those. And it's also interesting results. A lot of people have concerns about hybrid powertrains, whether the hybrid powertrain is going to last, whether I say hybrid or hybrid, however you want to pronounce it, uh, whether they're going to last. And looking at that, looking at the hybrid system with the battery, it actually has an average lifespan of more miles on their odometer readings. Looking at the Kia Sorento, then you have the Nissan Pathfinder, Accurate MDX, Ford Explorer. You can see the list, Lexus, and a couple of other Lexus as well. So looking at average lifespan, we look at the, the mid-size SUV average. Uh, the Toyota and Lexus products are all above the average lifespan. Actually, most of this list is unless you get the Kia Sorento and Nissan Pathfinder. Average vehicle price by $54,000. So it's quite an interesting jump there, $35,000 to $54,000. So quite a bit jump 
between mid-sized SUVs and small SUVs. I thought that was kind of surprising as well. Okay, best large SUVs. As you'd imagine, this is a pretty interesting uh, list, but we're, we're really kind of, she says, I'm completely flummoxed that it's a Buick on the top of the list. In the bizarro world, you have Nissan taking a number two spot, which is a complete contrast to the best trucks and money. I did a best trucks and money video a couple, of, uh, couple days ago, and yeah, completely flip-flops. And this is going to be in, really interesting. So we have the Buick Enclave, which I didn't really know is that full-size SUV, but I guess it is that big. Uh, you have average lifespan, though, is 152,000 miles. I don't know if that's just because they don't have enough Buick Enclaves to do the odometer readings or if that only lasts that long. Nissan Armada, 181,000. The Toyota Sequoia is interesting, coming in at 226,531. It's interesting because there, there's a new Sequoia in the marketplace. Uh, this is based on the old Sequoia lifespan, so just keep that in mind. But it's interesting how expensive it is. It's like the top of the price range compared to these other SUVs. Ford Expedition comes in fourth. Uh, that surprised me as well. The Ford Expedition, uh, when I've done comparisons, doesn't have as good quality as like Sequoia has or even the Chevrolet has. And coming in fourth, eh, interesting. Just, again, more interesting data. Uh, Chevrolet Tahoe comes in at 72,000 and 193,000 miles. And Chevy Suburban comes in sixth for the above industry average. So the other thing to keep in mind, there's lots of other SUVs in the marketplace. These are only the ones that come in above or around the industry average. If you don't meet that metric, you fall off. So if it's not on the list, it did not meet this metric. So it's just interesting data. We do talk about um, there is reliability and resale value. We have stories on that as well. There's also Edmund's total cost of ownership. It's a calculator you put in your zip code, you put in your vehicle. It shows you what warranty works going to be like as far as auto warranty, tires, uh, different cost of ownership items, insurance is involved in there, and taxes as well. So really good information there too. And so it's it's interesting. So, you know, if you wanted one of these on the list and you're looking for, a, like, for example, a CRV and it's on the list, it may just confirm that that's what you wanted for the vehicle. If it's not on the list, it may say, hey, it may give you a pause. But again, this is just another tool in your arsenal when you're out there shopping for vehicles to be an informed consumer. For more videos like this, check the channel, check them over here. Website down below as well, pickuptrucktalk.com. I'll put it in the description as well. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you down the road.